Good evening. It's Saturday, March 21st. Um, this is a video that is overdue. I tried to shoot it back in January, but it didn't work. So I'm doing it again. Um, this is a video about my seed collection and what I will be hopefully planting this year. So let's take a look. So I'd like to start with my peppers. I tried to organize my seeds in a way that made sense to me. Um, so I should be starting the peppers or I should have started the peppers and tomatoes already, but um, I haven't been feeling great so I haven't started them yet. So we're going to do these Buena Mulata peppers from Baker Creek. Um, they're supposed to be kind of less spicy, but they look so pretty. Even if they're too spicy, they're going to be beautiful and I'll be happy to have them in the garden. Then I'm going to grow cubanelles. Um, these are some of our favorite peppers that we cook with. I know I say that about all the peppers. Um, yeah, so these will be good. Again, I need to start them already. And then I have the Violet Sparkle. Uh, these are supposed to be sweet peppers. I got them because they're purple and I thought I might be able to get Autumn to try them. Uh, they should be good because I'm allergic to green peppers. They should be good as a replacement in lots of dishes. So we'll see. Then I have the Oscillo Thin Skin peppers that I dried from last year's plants. These were the peppers that I got in the surprise pack from Seed Savers. Um, so I dried these seeds in August. And last but not least, we have the Black Hungarian peppers. It would appear that I mostly bought purple peppers. So I guess I'd be a purple pepper picker in the fall. Ah, I'm so bad at jokes. Um, these are also supposed to be not super spicy, um, mildly hot, should be good in salsas and chimichurri and things like that. So those are my peppers. I feel like this is a good time to say that this is going to be a very long video because I have a lot of seeds. So turn back now for anyone who's faint of heart or not equipped to deal with the number of seeds I have. Next, let's move on to tomatoes. So I got Brad's Atomic Grape Tomatoes because I love grape tomatoes. And I thought maybe I could get Autumn to try these. Um, they look like a lot of fun. They're supposed to be really easy to grow. Um, so we'll see. Dr. Witchy's yellow tomatoes are supposed to be one of the best tasting tomatoes. And, well, we love tomatoes in the summer. Just about any way you can have tomatoes, we will eat them. So, um, these are pretty big tomatoes. Uh, I'm hoping I have some success. Then, because I'm a little short on space sometimes because I buy too many seeds for the space I have, I got the Orange Hat Tomato, which is a miniature tomato. Um, extra dwarf bush, sweet, fruity, tiny tomatoes. I may plant them in some of my terracotta pots, or I don't know yet. I'm excited to try them because they're so cute. And then uh, with my order from Baker Creek, I received purple Russian tomatoes, and I really love those. So I'm excited to grow them this year. 
hopefully we can keep the deer away long enough to get more than two or three tomatoes. Another seed I need to start as soon as possible is this corn. Um, so in Syracuse, we have a very short and cool growing season and corn needs a long growing period. So what I did last year with my corn experiment, corn experiment, was I started some seeds. Well, I started a seed and it actually grew and produced cobs, but because there was only one, they weren't fertilized. So this year I'm gonna try strawberry corn. It says it's good for decorations and making popcorn. Um, they're really pretty. It should be a lot of fun, but I need to start them right away. Do you want to talk about peas, onions, or greens? I feel like greens. I've got a lot of greens. So I've got rainbow shard that I ordered last year, and I planted some, but not all. I've got five color silver beet shard. I've got uh, Monstro de Veroflé spinach. I've got Bloomsdale long-standing spinach. I've got walking stick kale. Uh, Autumn and I are very excited about this. Hopefully we can block our mean neighbor behind us. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't supposed to say that. This will be lots of fun. You should definitely YouTube search walking stick kale and see the history of this very cool, bra I guess it's a brassica. Then we have the Easter basket radish mix. Um, basically, if you have seen any of my videos, you know I love radishes and Autumn loves to pick them. So we'll be starting these in a couple weeks outside. I decided to try my hand with some Chinese pink celery. It's supposed to take less time and effort than regular American green celery. Um, so we'll try, because I also love celery. Now for our carrots. Uh, we've got Kyoto Red. We've got Cosmic Purple. I, oh, these aren't carrots. These are golden beets. I must have switched them around when I planted beets and carrots and radishes earlier. Uh, we have hybrid Adelaide carrots. Uh, oh, bib lettuce. That should be in here. I've never had any luck growing heads of lettuce, but we'll see. Uh, Hercules carrots. Uh, minuet Chinese cabbage. So this looked interesting, and I had so much fun growing cabbage last year. Oh, look, more Bloomsdale long-standing spinach. We must like spinach and kale here. Uh, then we've got blue curled scotch kale, the purple kale. We must really like our greens. So those are the greens and root vegetables. I'm not even halfway through my seeds, and I'm afraid you're getting bored. Are you getting bored? I can try to come up with some more puns. Um, but mostly, I've got a lot of seeds. I don't know if you like puns, so comment and tell me if you like my puns. Should I be punnier? And now on to a new category-ish for me. Onions. I got bunching onions, because we love bunching onions and Autumn likes to eat them wild. I'm gonna try some Walla Walla sweet onions. I'm not really sure how it's gonna go, but we'll try. Um, should be planted in the spring and picked in the winter. We've got hybrid red onions that should take 100, 100 days to pick. And then we've got the Stuttgarter onions that I ordered in the fall, but was too chicken to plant. So we'll try some onions this year, maybe. And now for the peas. I know this is no surprise, but we have the sugar magnolia peas again, because 
we liked the flavor so much last year. These are ones that I'm going to grow every year that I'm able to grow peas. They are just the tastiest. Oh, and then we've got the Tom Thumb peas. I was on a dwarf plant kick when I placed my order. And these dwarf peas are just the cutest. They're supposed to be tasty, but they look super cute. I'm hoping they're productive. Um, again, I may or may not plant them in the garden. I may do them in pots. We'll see how crazy I'm feeling. And now it's melon time. So I have some leftover Blacktail Mountain watermelon from last year. We had moderate success. I was able to get melons about that big, but because we had such weird rainfall, they split before they got any bigger. I did honestly eat the insides. They, they were good. They weren't ripe or fully grown, but they were tasty. So we might try them again. And then I've got some leftover Noir de Carm melons from last year, which I wasn't able to get any to get as far as the watermelons. They say that they only take 75 days. We got the plants to mature, but they didn't produce any fruit. So I don't know if we're going to devote space to them again this year. I got the Charante... I feel like I should say that with some attitude. Charante melon. These are supposed to be personal size melons. Um, they look like they have a pretty short growing period based on my research. So I'm hoping we'll have some good success with these this summer. And then I got Minnesota Midget Melon, which is another personal size watermelon or personal melon. It's essentially a miniature cantaloupe. I'm trying to go smaller with the melons. Uh, then we have the torpedo melon, which is supposed to be a short day melon, and we'll see. The packet even says 65 days to maturity. So, fingers crossed. And then I have some sugar kiss melon seeds that I saved in August. Um, I don't think I need to plant all of them because that would take up my whole yard, but we've got a variety of melons. So, on to the squashes. This is some spaghetti squash. Squ spaghetti squash, oh my goodness, brought to me by my mother-in-law. Um, so I've got spaghetti squash. I've got zucchini. I've got uh, straight neck yellow squash. I've got hybrid yellow summer squash, slick pick. And I've got some more zucchini. So I think we'll be set on the squashes. Good thing we like them. It's time to talk herbs. So I loved my chamomile so much last year. I ordered common chamomile from Johnny Seeds. I got teddy bear dill, which is a smaller dill. And then with my orders from Baker Creek, I got bee balm, which I've never grown, but looks very interesting. My herb garden will be very happy this year. And then I also got bouquet dill. So we'll have two varieties of dill and just opening the box all I can smell is dill. Then I've got cinnamon basil. I've never tried cinnamon basil, but I'm excited to try it. I, I've seen many people growing it. Um, so if you've grown it, let me know how it turned out. Then I got this dark purple basil, Autumn's request. She wants me to make purple pesto. She loves basil, she loves pesto. And we'll see if the purple basil is any better than the green basil. I also got this anise hyssop. I, for some reason, have really enjoyed the taste of anise lately. I used to hate it, but now I love it. So we're going to try growing it, 
so we can make some more teas. And then I've got uh, some Genovese basil left over from last year. I had a lot of basil last year. Um, looks like I'm going to have a lot of basil again this year. So that's it for my herbs. Um, next, on to the flowers. Moving on to the flowers is going to be very intense. We've got a lot of flower seeds and I ordered flower bulbs because Autumn and I have planned a birds and bees garden this year. Um, so without further delay, let's get into the flower seeds. I went a little wild. It's okay. So we got these cherry rose nasturtium. I love the way nasturtium look um, and they're edible. These are going to be beautiful. I cannot wait to get them planted. Then I've got these, apparently they're called calendula, but if you're from Chicago, they're calendula, uh, which is what I've always called them. And these are supposed to be pretty big mixture of them. I'm really excited to see how they grow. Um, so that'll be fun. I got Nigella Love in a Mist. They're purple and pink and white, uh, very light pastel-y colors. Um, they're kind of a ground cover, so it'll be nice in the front of our flower border, however we decide to make them go. I went overboard with the poppies, but I love poppies, so it's fine. It's all good. So we've got Flemish Antique Poppies. These I cannot wait to see in person. They are beautiful in all of the pictures I've seen from them. Oh, I cannot wait. Hopefully I'll figure out how to save the seeds so I can grow them again. We've got Snapdragons. I got a deluxe variety. Uh, they're extra tall. They're going to just be beautiful. Hopefully my foxglove will bloom this year and will complement the snapdragons. We've got orange Hawaii marigolds. These are a little bit taller than the ones that I had last year, but I think that'll be just fine because I love the way marigolds look. And these ones seem extra frilly and I think they'll go great in our garden. I got the Paradiso Mix Echinacea. I love Echinacea, also known as coneflowers. They grow so well for me every place I've ever planted them, and this variety looks like a lot of fun. Of course, I had to get the Queen Lime Zinnias. This year I got the red ones, and I think these might quickly be becoming my favorite cutting flowers. Um, because it's a birds, butterflies, and bees uh, garden, we of course have to have yarrow, which is the food for monarch butterflies, um, along with milkweed. So this is going to be great. These are beautiful in bouquets. They don't smell mu like much to me, but butterflies love them. These purple prince zinnias are hu have huge flower heads. And Autumn really like the hot pink color. So I think these will be fun to have and cut. Um, they're cut and come again, just like all zinnias. I cannot wait to get into the flower garden. Straw flowers are, again, one of my favorite cutting flowers. Um, they look great in bouquets. They look dr great dried. They look great growing. So this is a really tall a uh, beautiful mix that I ordered with a ton of different colors. I think it'll go really nicely with the other flowers we picked out. And we've got sunflowers. These are some miniature sunflowers that'll be perfect for bouquets. And hopefully we can keep them away from the deer. I know I'm probably making everyone sick and tired of hearing that. But the deer got my sunflowers last year too. Then we got the coxcomb. Uh, so this is a coral garden mix. I love coxcomb. 
they look like brains, but they're just gorgeous. And I couldn't resist this variety mix. So we'll see how they work. I've never grown coxcomb myself, but it should be fun. I also got Canterbury Bells. Um, I thought these were really pretty. They're very cottagey. The colors go very well with the other colors that we picked. Um, so they'll be a lot of fun, I think. Of course, I had to get milkweed or butterfly weed. This will be great um, for cutting and obviously for leaving in the garden for butterflies. And probably the easiest flower to plant anywhere, bachelor's button. They will grow anywhere, and I got the artistic mix. Usually I get the blue and white mix, but I couldn't resist those purples and pinks. I was just in the mood for some purples and pinks in my garden this year. Then I've got the wildflower mixture for birds and butterflies. As you can see, there's some nasturtiums, some cosmos, some echinacea. We have yarrow. Uh, it looks like those might be, um, I don't know, what are those? Canterbury bells, maybe? And then some zinnia there in the back. So this will be fun to just sort of put along our border and see what comes up. And we also have the milkweed uh, collection. So this will be a lot of fun. Six individual packets of milkweed. And um, different colors, different varieties. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, we have common milkweed, butterfly milkweed, showy milkweed, swamp milkweed, blood flower, and autumn blaze milkweed. But wait, I'm not done. I know, I've been going on for over six minutes about flowers. So I found Mountain Lily Farm Heirloom Seeds and Plants. And they have just the most gorgeous collection of flower seeds I have seen anywhere. Um... So I ordered these from Etsy. I've never ordered seeds from Etsy before. Um, so these are Gomfrina formula mix. These are, um, I believe, like large peony shaped bulb or flower heads. I'll have to double check that. Um, I got Shirley poppies. Uh, Again, I told you, I went kind of crazy with the poppies, but I love poppies. And since I can't plant roses, and I'm trying not to plant too many bulbs, poppies are as close as I'm getting. I've got the Lawrence Grape poppies, which are some purple poppies, which I think will be just so much fun. Oh, look, more poppies. And then... I got the queen lime blush. So these are the pink uh, queen lime zinnias. Not the red ones, but the pink ones. And they will be great fun. Again, these are all from Mountain Lily Farm. And here's her details. So let me know what you think about my seeds. So this is the Gomfrena. I definitely was wrong. They look like big, tall, colorful clovers. So ignore my suggestion that they look like peonies earlier, because they don't. This is what they look like. Particularly, I'd like to know what you think about my variety of flowers. Uh, where should we plant them? Should I plant all of them? Should I give up on growing vegetables and fruit and focus on the flowers. Have I lost my mind with the number of flowers we're going to plant? Um, anyhow, thanks for watching. Do the youtube -y things. Um, I hope all's growing well by you. Take care.